What's going on, guys? It's Nick here, back with another video. It's Saturday, so time to take a look back at the last two weeks, talk about the players who have fallen the most by ADP. Two weeks ago, we predicted that Travis Etienne, James Conner, Ramondre Stevenson, Evan Ingram, and Cortland Sutton would see their ADPs fall for the millionth straight week. We went three and two with those predictions. Etienne, James Conner, Evan Ingram all fell in ADP. Stevenson, Cortland Sutton both rose slightly. A 5-0 prediction week has been quite elusive for us thus far, but I think we can do it this week. So we'll close this video with my predictions as usual. But who has fallen over the last two weeks besides the players I just mentioned? Number one follower is Josh Downs. He's fallen 19 spots, now going 194th overall, basically making his way into an 18th round pick in every single draft. Uh, tough to not drop when you're a rookie, when camp reports from your team or the passing game kind of stinks, uh, when you've got a rookie quarterback, and when you've also been battling through a knee injury, and so you're not on the field. So not exactly shocked by this fall. Um, I do maintain that he can have like a solid role in the offense. He's obviously not taking over Michael Pittman. This obviously is not going to be a good passing offense. So I don't think he's going to be amazing. But if he starts going, you know, he's available in like the late 18th round on underdog. I want some exposure to that ADP. But again, the fall makes sense. And for those of you in redraft leagues, you probably don't need to really worry about him this season. Uh, Kyler Murray, second biggest faller, down 15 spots. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe we have any updated news about his recovery. I'm assuming people are just kind of realizing that it's likely he's going to miss you know, a good chunk of time. He's very unlikely to start the season healthy. Uh, best case scenario seems to be that he kind of returns around midseason. Maybe a risk that it's even later than that. I have had him tanked in the rankings all summer, even at the new ADP. I'm going to keep avoiding him. But again, I don't think there's any sort of single reason as far as like an article that drops saying he's like not going to play this season. I don't think any of that happened. Just people are realizing, you know, you probably don't want to draft him very early. Uh, moving a little bit earlier in drafts, almost every single New York Giants player has dropped an ADP. Uh, going in order of ADP, Saquon's down two and a half spots, now going 19th overall, which is a Really good value for him if he doesn't hold out. Uh, Waller has fallen two spots, now going the late seventh round. Daniel Jones is down five spots, now in the early tenth round. Jalen Hyatt down 14 spots, now going in the early 14th round. Paris Campbell has somehow fallen a spot, now going in the late 18th round. That one confuses me the most because among everyone on this team, I guess you can like kind of understand it if like, I'm going to talk about in a second. I think it's just like a projection change by a major site. But Paris Campbell has received like a lot of really good news over the last week uh, saying that like he's been heavily involved, that beat reporters are anticipating he's going to have a really strong role in the offense. I really thought I'd look at that and like see the ADPs and see him up around. So falling, maybe it's just like the news is too recent and so people haven't fully adjusted to it yet. Uh, but yeah, that's one that I don't fully understand. Um, but again, I think all Giants players are falling because whether it's ETR or another site, uh, like maybe Fantasy Points or something like that, I think one of the major sites just dropped the projection on the Giants as a team, and that just lowered their ranking on uh, many of the Giants players. And since we're so early, right, this is still only mid-June, people drafting right now are paying attention and they are using the rankings of these major sites. As we move into July, into August, when these major sites have ranking changes, they're not going to impact ADP as much and as quickly because you have a lot more casual people drafting. I think right now there's just not as many casual people drafting. And so when a site does that, we see the ADPs drop a lot. So again, that's what I think has been happening. Um, I don't think it should be happening. I honestly think it's a great stack to have, you know, a great cheap stack is if you can grab Daniel Jones late and pair him with Waller or with Hyatt or with Campbell and just kind of get a piece of that offense, betting on the offense to be decent, I think that's a good thing. And then also, if you're drafting right now, Saquon, like, I don't think he's going to hold out this season. I'd be pretty surprised if he did. And so I have seen him go in the 20s. I saw someone get, like, him with Justin Jefferson. Like, they had the one-on-one. -on -one, they got Saquon as well. And then they get the first pick in the third round. So it's getting a little bit absurd. You should definitely be drafting him at this uh, depressed ADP. Uh, but yeah, I don't agree with the, the drop personally. 
Another team that's had players dropping massively is the Miami backfield. A different reason, so this isn't a projection change from major site. This is, you know, Dalvin Cook wants to go to Miami. It seems like the most likely team that he's going to go to. And so we see Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson both down over around. Devon A-Chain is down eight spots. If Dalvin Cook goes to Miami, that will even continue. I would imagine, like in that scenario, Jeff Wilson gets cut. They keep Mostert as just like a you know a rotational piece. That it's Dalvin Cook is the one, Devon A Chain is the two, and being like a change of pace back, and then like Mostert kind of mixing in with A Chain, getting a little bit less work than A Chain, but you know just mixing in and being a player. They just like him in the locker room, everything like that. Uh, but again, I, I think they would end up cutting Jeff Wilson. So. If that happened, it's brutal news for the running backs, and they have not fallen enough if that were to be the case. Like, we would continue to see them fall in ADP. Uh, and so I, I do think it is warranted, since Miami is the most likely destination right now, you should be seeing these running backs fall in ADP. I will say this, though. Um, I think Mostert and Wilson make more sense to be falling a lot than Devon A-Chain, those two are are kind of toast in fantasy if Cook signs. And even if he doesn't, they're not overly valuable. Like they still need A-Chain to get injured to have like, you know, decent value in fantasy and really break out. A-Chain will still have some value if Dalvin Cook signs as whether that's the one or the one A, like whatever it happens, Cook would still be the one, but A-Chain would still have value. And if Cook doesn't sign, A-Chain's what, like a seventh or eighth round pick and he would go way up in ADP, but it's like he'd still be one of the premier handcuffs. He'd still be someone who gets a workload. It's not like they would bring Dalvin Cook in to get 100% of the touches. So I'm still absolutely fine drafting A-Chain right now, though I would do it when he becomes a discount because if his ADP is trending down, there's a lot of drafts where he'll fall even like you know half a round or a round past the ADP. So I'm not reaching on him right now, uh, but definitely like not afraid to get him because he's someone we could see end up with a much higher ADP than it is right now. And like, let's be honest, like Dalvin's not a lock to go to Miami. Uh, looking at the biggest fallers inside the top 100, Justin Fields is actually the largest faller down eight picks now going in the early fifth round. I remember when he was going in the third round just a month ago, and it was way too early for me. But I was still a little bit uneasy in saying that and in passing on him in every single draft because he obviously has league winning upside. Like even if you were taking him in the late third round, you know, that was probably like a month or a month and a half ago, he had the upside to run for 1,500 yards, 15 touchdowns, and just break fantasy. Like he had that upside. And so I didn't want to take him that early, but I was scared in not taking him. In the fifth round, you better not be fading Justin Fields this season. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to take him in every draft. Like I'm not saying just every single league have to take him. There's a ton of really good quarterbacks. but And you don't even really need to be overweight. Just don't fade him. Like if you're playing in, let's say, a handful of redraft leagues, somewhere in that like three to five range. If you're playing in two, you're fading a ton of players, right? But if you're playing in like at least three, or maybe you're playing an underdog and you're doing like, 20 puppy draft, something like that, where you're not just drafting like one team this season. I would not feel good about having zero Justin Fields shares in the fifth round. And again, trending down. So trending into the fifth round, like if he becomes, you know, a mid late fifth round pick, that's absurd. It is completely absurd. Again, I don't think you need to have heavy exposure. I don't have heavy exposure right now since he was going in the third round, but I am a thousand percent taking him in round five and just crossing my fingers that he falls even further than that. Another top 100 quarterback that's falling is Anthony Richardson. I'm also excited for this one, but for a slightly different reason. Uh, every single week, I look at you know ADP compared to my rankings. I'm always significantly behind ADP on Anthony Richardson. I do my best. I'm like, okay, can I make this up? Can I give him more carries, more touchdowns, more passing yards? Can I do something to increase his projection? And it's always like, yeah, maybe a little bit, but it's been impossible to get him at ADP. Uh, so I really haven't been drafting him, maybe one league so far. But if his ADP is going to keep going down, that's definitely helpful in getting him a little bit later. Um, he's now made his way into the early ninth round. I have him projected at that like round nine, 10 turn. So 
still not someone I go after because, you know, if I have him ranked around after ADP, it's unlikely he becomes the top player in the rankings. But I'm very happy to see his ADP come down because he is a player that I want some exposure to. Like, I'm not willing to reach, but he's someone that could run for like seven, 800 yards, could have a ton of rushing touchdowns and, you know, probably doesn't have the same upside of like Justin Fields and Lamar, you know, in year one, that would be very impressive for him to do. I don't think the passing offense is going to be that great for the Colts, but he's someone I want some exposure to. So I'm happy it's going down. Uh, it just hasn't fallen enough. He needs to keep falling for me to get him. In terms of non-quarterback followers inside the top 100, Isaiah Pacheco is a big one, and I'm actually in big agreement with this one. I have dropped into the rankings. I am now a good chunk behind ADP um, because I've always felt uneasy in taking him, but it was just really difficult to give like Clyde, um, McKinnon a lot of volume because I also didn't really want to draft any of them, but it was like, who am I giving the volume to? They didn't really have anyone else. But now, Daenerys Prince is getting a ton of hype in camp, and I like sort of buy into it. Um, I still think it's unlikely that anyone overtakes Pacheco as, you know, just this clear running back one. I don't think anyone will ever be featured on this offense, which is part of why I've been uneasy about Pacheco. But if they brought back McKinnon, Clyde is doing well, and now Prince looks great in camp, we're just adding more outs. It doesn't mean that Clyde's going to be the guy, or that McKinnon's going to get a ton of third down snaps, or that Prince is going to break out. But it means that there are small chances to a bunch of different things that could lead to Isaiah Pacheco disappointing this season. And for every single thing that you add, I like him less and less because the chances that he busts go up. Because even if you don't think Prince is going to be any good this season, you have to admit that it's not great news for Pacheco that he's doing really good in camp and the team loves him. And if you don't know... Um, I believe he went undrafted. He either went really later undrafted. I'm pretty sure he went undrafted. Uh, but he's super athletic. And that's basically what they've been saying his camp is like, how is this kid this big and this fast? He's, um, I believe, six foot, 215, 216 pounds. We're in a 4'4", 140. It was above the 95th percentile, I believe 96th percentile, height adjusted speed score. Like he is very, very athletic. So I don't know. I don't love, I didn't love Pacheco before. Um, just, this is enough for me to take a step back, be like, if I wasn't feeling good before, we have another out for him busting. Let's see how far his ADP falls. And just from there, I'm not taking him right now. Uh, and that's really it, honestly, for like big time followers over the past two weeks. I would say the biggest trend overall is just the wide receiver position. Running backs, tight ends, quarterbacks, across the board, if you just like had a dart, threw it at those positions and it lands on a random player, they probably fell by ADP because wide receivers, like everyone is just in love with them. They're going way up draft boards. So we will see how much that trend continues. But yeah, I mean, just across the board, wide receivers going up, people really want to attack that position and that's just pushing everything else down. All right, prediction time. Who do I think is going to fall over the next two weeks, not just saying everyone that is not a wide receiver, uh, but specific players I think are definitely going to fall. Number one, Brees Hall. Um, I'm already seeing him dip. I got him last night, so I'm actually um, I'm taking the rankings and I'm having them auto draft one draft per night just to see how it does, see how I can adjust things. And auto drafted Brees Hall, I believe it was 38th overall, so that's creeping, you know into the early fourth round, if he's going to keep falling and go, you know, in the mid fourth round in all leagues, that's going to pull back his ADP. Obviously, um, I've seen him fall in like a few drafts. Other than that one, um, there was a report that came out that was honestly really just speculation, but it was speculating that he might not be 100% in week one, which, I mean, we already kind of knew, yeah, he might not be 100% week one. We know this, um, but that was pure speculation. So any sort of dip, I do think we should capitalize on because until we get like, you know, concrete He's not playing in week one or, oh, he's going to be splitting in week one. Again, I don't think his ADP should be falling a bunch because of speculation, but I think it will over the next two weeks. Um, I also think Brian Robinson's going to fall a little bit. Antonio Gibson is getting a lot of hype right now in camp with them specifically saying he's going to be used a lot in the screen game. We know Brian Robinson is a zero in the passing game. It just seems like the split from last year where they hated Antonio Gibson. Now they all of a sudden love him with this new regime in there, a uh, new offensive coordinator. It seems like that split's going to be a lot more towards Gibson. And that's obviously terrible news for Brian Robinson because he needs 
heavy volume to pay off. He's a very inefficient player who only gets work on the ground. You probably shouldn't be drafting Brian Robinson. I also think Ken Walker is going to fall. I will continue my flag plant on him being overvalued. I think people will start to see that even more soon. Fourth on the list, Rashad Bateman. He's actually up five spots over the last two weeks, but he's missing time in camp. Um, it seems like it's not as bad as like initially reported. He's been getting these like cortisone shots. Like it didn't seem good at first, but it's still not great. Like he should be recovered by this point from the foot injury. So it's not terrible news like we thought it could have been before, but I think people are just going to see this be like, how on earth is he not 100% right now? How is he not out there? And they're going to start avoiding him. That'll push his ADP down. And then finally, Tyquan Thornton. Um, I genuinely have no idea. He is the second largest riser over the last two weeks. That makes zero sense. It is really just because he's been like the only wide receiver out there. They haven't had other uh, starting wide receivers playing in camp for the Patriots. There's a potential that DeAndre Hopkins goes to the Patriots again, even a small chance, but like, I don't understand how you're taking Tyquan Thornton, someone who was not good last season on an offense. That's not going to be that good where he's not even probably at best. He's the third best wide receiver in a bad offense. You're taking him in the early 14th round. That makes no sense. I would imagine that reverses course soon. So if you watch this far, be sure to hit the like button. And if you want to track ADPs on your own, I have a free tool on my website where you can see either the top risers and followers overall. You can see it by position. You can see it on a graphic or in table form, or you can even track individual players' movement over time. It is the best tool in the industry. And again, completely free on my website, thefencefootballadvice.com. I'll be back tomorrow with an underdog draft strategy and then Monday for another episode of Mock Draft Monday. Now, my friends, is in this one. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, how about hitting the like button? How about subscribing to the channel if you're new here? Thanks for watching.